I think in, in today's meeting, some of the, the key issues uh, are the focus on making resilience grow at a local community level. We tend to think that big things happen at the federal level, but in this case, resilience uh, necessarily grows out of local effort. Uh, we have, depending on who you talk to, something like 16,000 local towns and communities in the U.S. And uh, each one of those towns and communities faces some sort of, of risk. And the responsibility for uh, assessing, identifying and assessing those risks and then taking steps to uh, mitigate the risk through some sort of uh, resilience building program lies with the citizens of those towns, uh, with their local leadership, uh, as assisted by state, uh, federal uh, officials. But the primary responsibility ultimately lies with the, with the local citizenry. Uh, in conjunction with the private sector, uh, much of the infrastructure in, in towns and communities is owned by private companies. And so any discussion of uh, hardening infrastructure or, or making infrastructure more resilient has to include the private sector. Um, without resilience as a guiding principle in the decision-making process at the local level, uh, short-term decisions are guided by short-term interests, frequently economic interests, um, proposals for development, proposals for specific economic activities that mostly don't consider resilience as, as a factor. In order to build resilience in a community over time, and it is a, a long-term commitment, you have to infuse every decision that's made every day in that community with an awareness and a determination to build resilience. Um, anytime a community makes a decision to allow development of open land, for example, they need to stop and consider <clears throat> what the vulnerabilities are, what the exposure is, uh, and, and what construction and development there might do to the resilience of the community. Uh, frequently, we don't think about resilience until after the community is built, maybe until after a disaster happens. Uh, at that point, it's too late, and uh, then you're faced with rebuilding, and sometimes rebuilding in a, in a non-resilient fashion. So the, the best opportunity to build resilience into a, into a community is when the community is actually being developed. Uh, but since most of our communities are, are already being developed, um, it's, it's important to have the resilience mindset shaping those daily decisions as there's a turnover in infrastructure, uh, redevelopment of different parts of town, different economic opportunities and activities in town so that uh, resilience is sort of built into the community rather than uh, trying to come back in later and, and uh, lay a, a, a layer of resilience over the, over the town the two panels, one on uh, developing a resilience culture, talked about developing trust among citizens uh, in advance of disasters, I think that's very important. And then the, uh, the actions required to build resilience uh, gets to this decision-making process. So I think it was an excellent session.